traditional vax hesitant. Your view is more nuanced. Explain. No, let, let me make. Yeah, let me make clear, Michael. If if a vaccine had been around in March 2020 when I got COVID, I would have gotten vaccinated. COVID is no fun. I'm not. I'm not joking about. I don't want to get COVID again, and I don't want to risk anybody around me getting COVID. Well, my argument here is is that um, that what the evidence clearly shows is that natural immunity is a, as protective, provides at least as much protection against infection as the most effective vaccines, and clearly provides more protection than less effective vaccines such as the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is that um, natural immunity is estimated to have about a 90 to 95% pro, um, protection level, which is similar to the top vaccines. Johnson & Johnson, for example, is only 66%. And so um, the second thing is, is that if you've had um, uh, recovered from COVID and you get vaccinated, you don't just have the same risk of side effects as everybody else. You actually have an increased risk of side effects because of the risk of hyperinflammation. So what I'm saying to the university is, I, you may have, we're not challenging their right to be worried about immunity and protecting the community. What I am saying is though, you do not have a, a you have to have a good reason to discriminate between two different forms of immunity, both of which provide protection. On, on the same day that you published thoughts along the lines of what you've just said here on CNN, you did it in the Wall Street Journal. On that same day, uh, Dr. Uh, Rush, uh, Walensky, the head of the CDC, specifically said that someone in your position should get vaccinated. Yes, and uh, here, here's the deal, Michael, which is it, we are so far beyond one size fits all medicine when it comes to, uh, to this issue. Um, I have an immunologist. My immunologist is a, uh, a MD, PhD in immunology. He is familiar with my health history. He is familiar with what all of this is uh, and what the literature says. He and I have certainly not ruled out the possibility that sometime in the future, it might be useful for me to get some degree of vaccination. Um, it may be that one shot is appropriate. It may be the two shots is, uh, is appropriate. But the reality here is, is that I have immunity. My antibody tests are 900 times baseline um, uh, protection for, uh, for antibodies. And here's the funny thing, Michael, which is I've talked to a lot of people who have been vaccinated in the past week. I have not met a single person who knows what their act, who has been vaccinated, who knows what their actual current level of immune protection is. I right, do. but you could make the same. But 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 cases. professor, you could make the you could make the same argument about people who have had COVID. I wouldn't want someone who had COVID at the outset to walk around robustly and say, "Well, I've had it. I'm I'm sure I'm immune." One last thing. Oh, of uh, Dr. Lena uh, Wen. Dr. Lena right. Wen that's is a CNN right. is a CNN medical expert for whom I have a lot of respect. So I shared with her your essay. Here's what she told me. Put it up on the screen. She said, it is true that those with prior infection from COVID-19 have some immune protection. However, studies have shown that this protection is not durable, strong, or consistent as immunity from vaccination. A recent CDC study found that those recovered but remained unvaccinated twice as likely as reinfected. That's the point that I just made. The presence of antibodies is not a reliable indicator of immune response. There's more to it, but quickly respond to that. Well, first, the way we determine whether vaccines work is by testing people's antibodies. If you have zero antibody response, they give you a booster shot. Second, again and again and again, that CDC study, they intentionally misrepresented the findings. It does not say twice as likely to be infected. It says twofold likelihood. If you look at the math, what it says is if you do get vaccinated, and this is a very, very flawed study, but if you do look at it, even under the flaws in the study, you have a 0.02 risk of infection if you're vaccinated and about a 0. Point, or 0.5, uh, 0.05 risk if you're not. Yeah, that's twofold. 0.05 is twice as much more or less as 0.02, but we're talking about very, very small uh, margins. They couldn't determine whether or not one shot would be enough or two shots because they only had 246 people. A 52,000 person study from the Cleveland Clinic found no benefit. A 12,000 uh, person study from Oxford actually found that those who um, were vaccinated were more likely to develop uh, symptomatic infection. This is a decision for me and my doctor. Um, given that I have immunity, it's a decision for me and my doctor as to what to do next. Okay, Not I get it. Yours and yours, yours might be a unique. Yours might be a unique circumstance. We're not talking here about a blanket approach to everybody who's have COVID. Uh, my goal in this 
conversation is simply to advance discussion of what about those with some level of natural immunity because we don't seem to discuss them all that often with all the data about how many who've been vaccinated and how many who haven't. 